A good cause makes a strong earn. On 23rd of September 1909, in Kirkwall, the Arcadian Women's Suffrage Society was formed in the drawing room of Daisy Bank House. The society, open to men and women, was non-party political and non-militant. It was led by some of the most established families in Orkney, the Bakeys of Tankerness, the Cursitors and the McNeils. School teachers, Presbyterian ministers, merchants and landowners of Orkney. Dr Mary McNeil practised medicine. As suffragists, they believed very much in social reform, temperance and the importance of education. Musical events and plays were held to raise funds because the organisation was very much a social one as well as a political one. Meetings took place in halls and at pierheads. Discussions would reflect the justice of their cause, equality of pay and opportunity. Women had been able to vote in local elections since 1888, but the ability to elect their Member of Parliament was denied them. It was taxation without representation. The National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies sent speakers to Orkney, including Dr Elsie Engels, one of the founders of the movement. They lobbied the local council and MPs with an energetic writing campaign and by raising petitions. Arcadian women went to the massive demonstrations for women's suffrage which took place in Edinburgh and London, marching behind a banner designed by the artist Stanley Cursida. Many debates took place in the House of Commons, but a series of conciliation bills fell and successive governments failed to deliver, often citing the militant action of the suffragettes as the reason. With the outbreak of war in 1914, the society in Orkney ceased its political activity and threw itself behind relief work. They sponsored the Orcadian Bed in the Scottish Women's Hospital, established by Dr Elsie Ingalls in northern France. Dr Mary McNeill served in these hospitals in both France and Serbia and was awarded the French Medal of Honour of the Epidemics and the Serbian honour of St Sava. Two million women took on traditional men's jobs in Britain during the First World War. In 1918, the representation of the People's Act was passed, giving the vote to all men over the age of 21 and to women who were over 30 years and who had property, increasing the electorate from 8 million to 21 million. But ironically, it was not until 1922, with a contested general election, that the women in Orkney were finally able to vote. <laughs>